Welcome to Same Ish Different Day, a space where the thoughts are just as for. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Same Ish Different Day, a space where everything is on the table and the thoughts are just as frenetic as your Twitter feed. And just like your feed, we kick it off with some talks on some bulls hey, of the day and eventually bring you some value with well-cited research on stories you may have missed. Yeah, the, this show is the long-term format of marching in, into madness, a duo of journalists of, that are developing a content project about their passions. So get ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> some weeks our estranged Strange why mom drops by to keep us in line, but she's been missing for a little bit, so we don't know what's going on with that. But, but... The line, please. <laughs> but she recently went out for milk and a pack of bogeys, but at least that's what she she, she told us, so we assume she's going to be back anytime now. Oh, and, and socials? Socials were on all of them. TikTok, IG, YouTube, and Twitch where we live stream these podcasts on a weekly basis. If you tune in, you can ride out with us afterwards. Speaking of, of which, the future variant of this idiot will, will introduce, introduce us in three, two, one. And then you just bring up the... What's, What's up, internet? in it? What's up, internets? Yeah. Welcome to Same-ish, Different Day, the podcast with a name that we try to say but can't say anymore. Huh... This week, Raza introduced a topic called Who Reviews the Reviewers? And given the Halloween season, it also brings up a lot of media. So it's a topical discussion when we're relating it to our Halloween classics. First off, new format, new us. Tune in because we're starting off. Every time, don't (laughs) Yeah. For audio listeners, Raza is Boba Fett and I am a Jedi, so he may sound muffled <laughs> because he is wearing a literal helmet. It's new format. <laughs> new format, new us. If you tuned in I, last week, I released the episode late. If you tuned in last week, what we do now is we got our little news injection in the middle so that we can get our personal enjoyment out of it and possibly provide some value to this, as well as we're sneaking in commercials and making this a bit more professional. So later on, I brought on some recent news to talk about uh, Jack Dorsey, the former CEO of Twitter, and Raza will be talking about a hotbed election, which you want to keep your eye on because it will definitely be in the interest of the Western influences. To kick it off... We want to debate if we should trust review websites. Think Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes, anything in that realm. Film's the easiest approach to take. So, do we trust Metacritic, other review websites, right? Movies are hella polarizing. People actually thought Gone in 60 Seconds was bad, but 77% of Rotten Tomatoes says otherwise. Do these numbers even mean anything? Or like some people, do they dictate how they feel about the movie, show, album, and video game? Which is also another topical application. Raza, as someone who works in the journalism field for that, do you find yourself influenced by the reviews for any type of media? Uh, I think that um, it does sort of influence it because um, reviewers help, like, you know, dictate popular opinion right that's Mm -hmm. that's their whole 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 job and uh it it makes sense that you would want to listen to somebody whose whose professional job is to influence what you what you what you pick now is there a disconnect obviously right because uh as reviewers we have a deadline we can't fully ingest your four hour long justice leagues the way an audience does because we have we have stuff to do we have things to to finish we have other projects to 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 do and that kind of creates the, the disconnect or uh, or like the not even the, the disconnect but like the easy way to have your uh decision influence because you can just look up to somebody else who who, who knows what they're talking about who's an expert on this and okay so, such and such said uh uh assassin's creed is bad i'm gonna listen to that because i've trusted their opinion 
initially. So like, and you, and you also have to like develop that sort of like rapport with the with the community as as well. Yeah. So you think it's also influenced by the necessity of people to pump out opinions on it on such a rapid basis that creates like a disjointed set of opinions on the topic. I know that was fancy, yeah. but does that make sense? Yes. It's yeah. Because like, again, we absorb things in a, t in a fucking high speed manner where like we can't properly take in the, the finer de 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 details mm -hmm. unless we have a long deadline. Right. But like, generally speaking, yeah. Or like, one 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 movie game or whatever for every couple of days and then we would go on to the next thing um like like the fucking for example people thought the batman right the main complaint about the batman was it was too long while the audience enjoyed that like was like oh the length is was was not the problem nothing was the, the problem right so it just it just like it's just like there's two different sort of views in this thing and i don't know it's hard to tell what's right and what's not because like I, I i speak to my friend who, who's a game developer and i also use like and like you even in their thing there's a huge a, a disconnect from what they're doing and what the community wants or like so nobody's sort of understanding anything right like the, so we're and then we're looking at it from a completely a whole lot. Like, we're trying to be unbiased. We're like, you're going to have your super fan that's going to be like, oh, such and such said, said this about this, right? So, like, look at IGN. Uh, the perfect example, like, Alien Isolation. I'm going to plug it, by the way. I played that entire game, entire Let's Play, YouTube it, Alien Isolation. I did that, scared the shit out of myself, but uh, I, IGN gave Alien Isolation a 7 out of 10, right? And that mm -hmm. sort of not, not only influenced the sales, but like influenced the the, the, the company, like Sega's decision making making about the game. So like because of that, there's no Alien I Isolation too. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So I would agree. Like ultimately, objective opinion, especially nowadays, is part of the issue that we're approaching yellow journalism again, right? Like. IGN can essentially put out whatever they want, but eventually that's still being written by a critic who, say, really liked the Alien movies as a kid, so it's going to have a biased opinion on how the game was, you know what I mean? Yeah. I guess. I guess. But it, 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 it's just like people, like, with, like, big institutions, like, like IGN, for example, they don't, like... Their 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 opinions are supposed to be drawn for, 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 for like the bigger audience. Not everybody is gonna like that alien isolation, but then again, like a whole bunch of other places like uh, who don't have the same sort of like uh, weight as I, IGN would give it a better rating. But because of its fucking influence, people are gonna listen to IGN more because it's just like oh, it's IGN, mm. uh, like. They are like the Roger Ebert of the film or the movie, the the game in the industry. So like, if you get a pass on IGN, nothing um really matters at the point, and I, and that sucks because you're just I'm relying on one sort of source. Yeah, and I think gaming is a good relevant example of that, especially as the movie market crumbles with streaming access now. So this was something that was more serious then in that industry. But it's funny to see that now like gaming, a digital industry is like such a victim of the same old fashioned system that influences so much of the culture as well as the purchasing power in that sector. It just, it just, it just, uh, like people want, uh, their thing to to be good like so badly right like they'll fight tooth and nail about it over and, and over again those people still... oh my god is that it okay raza 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 hear me out hear me out hear me out you ready for this you ready for this okay, yeah. you ready for this it's the okay. capitalism it's the capitalism 
It is. It's because it's like, <laughs> like, like it is like with all like jokes aside, it kind of is because like you you can definitely like pay like this has happened to us before. Uh, you can definitely like give a company can can give uh, a certain publication a lot of gifts. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And that can be like, like oh if if you if 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 you give a, our thing a higher a higher um re um review you will do like um like we will give you more early access it'll give you more codes it'll give you exclusive content or we'll, we'll give you the scoop yeah the like, thing is there's okay. always some form of payola even at the higher level right like xbox providing tester kits to ign and shit but then ign has to wait in line like everybody else to get a ps5 so which device do you think they're going to write favorably about at the start exactly, yeah so it's like as you said it, it, it it's going towards the I, mean, I didn't see that guy and i got him fucking let's go oh um, bingo I, but i i and as you 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 said it's going towards the way of, of yellow journalism and that's essentially what, what what this is right it's just like you can now buy your your um reviews the same well that's a really spicy take but like i i think it's going that that way like you can be like oh yeah like oh uh ign doesn't get a ps5 but they get an, an xbox so xbox will yeah. get 10 out of 10, 10 because of the availability, regardless if it's the better console or not. So like, that's why we're seeing just this massive, like sort of like influx of like everybody can say whatever they want, right? And then yeah. people can get their own sort of like leeway by the, the, these companies. Uh, so it's just like, and you know, we're guilty of, of it too, but it's like, uh, it's something that's sort of like, playing a larger role than what it should, should be you know like sure it's one way it's so it's uh, one would you say would you say we're too dependent on them on the reviewers yeah 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 i yes um i yeah because like as much as you and i harp on 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 him and chirp him him a lot but like look at all of the zach snyder like his without the center cut like Batman versus Superman, uh, and and I think uh, Man of Steel didn't un uh, specifically Batman versus yeah. Superman didn't like with a box office bomb because of the negative press, right? So, so the like, the button like, I'm gonna poke there, and then excuse the listeners, we're going mad, we're going geeky here, but like I would argue that wasn't that more influenced by influencers and YouTubers and uh, not counterculture but smaller creators over traditional media and critics like what do you mean like, like all the snyder mm -hmm. shit specifically like some some media aspects like when we're talking about what's being made or rated good it's also very much influenced by the community and that's why i think that's like an important topic as to how these critics things are being so much more influenced in a old school fashion you know yeah no, like, like, uh, yeah, you, you, you have a point there because, like, like the Snyder Cut, I do believe was, a, like, uh, like a, a consequence of like that, like, oh, the uh, or the um, reviewers don't know what, the, or the critics don't know what they're talking about, right? So yeah, I, I, I think that yeah, like, like you are um, right about about that, but, and then and and and, and that's a double edge edge sword because not ever like, I don't know. It's true. The, the Snyder Cut is a very polarizing movie you either hate it or you like it right so like i think some critics are a safeguard right in order to to stop like to like make like to like like not have these sort of like like over indulgent uh projects sort of like like spur up right uh because like you don't need a four-hour cut in order to see a movie that's already like the same thing um it's, it's, true. it's just like you those um reviewers are like they're telling you what it is uh based on a two-hour thing and but then once you add the, the 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 director's whole creative vision it sort of like nullifies all opinion like oh it's just based on like you can't judge it because it's Snyder's vision but like what happens if it's yeah. not a good vision right 
I hate so, that so much of our conversations come back to like the journalism and journalistic standards and writing standards and shit like that yeah. because yeah. essentially it's like yeah because no one's got an official voice everyone just has a voice now so then yeah. you can just yeah. say what you want and that's influence there's no standard to it so then even if I'm Rotten Tomatoes ultimately if I want a movie to have a good rating, I'll figure it out by picking the specific reviewers that I know like that genre. Exactly. Yeah. So, and it's, 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 it's like, uh, as you said, everybody has a voice. You can just have a blog, open up a blog, boom. There you go. Look at what we're doing. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like, it's, 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 it's easy to make your, 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 your yourself the, uh, the center of attention and have all of these companies come to you when it's just like they know you can be you know swayed a certain way and that's what's happening to a lot of a lot of the, the companies like especially if if like now we're, we're talking about like for example rotten tomato i think rotten tomato or or, or metacritic is owned by hbo max mm -hmm. so what does that mean right so if, if, if they own <laughs> or so like 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 all of um like you could say all of uh, hbo max's content will be or like hbo content in general will, will, will be like uh will, 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 like um look, like looked at better because they can do it right oh like we own this so we can say whatever we want about, about this. and we can also filter out the bad uh, press. That's just, like that's what I think it's because like you, I think these these big companies are gonna buy these sites and have their own like like advertisement or like the uh, uh, well, or, like public or I or, do have or, to Google it. <clears throat> As far as I know, Rotten Tomatoes is owned by a holding group that is owned by Warner Brothers, right? Okay, so the, Brothers there's is somewhere in there. There's already cases where this is happening. I know Metacritic is owned by a media group, and then it's right. that question of like, then who influences that media group, right? Yeah, right. right. IGN like, is owned by Verizon, if I'm correct. I think. I don't know that. If not, it's one of the major industries. I'm fairly certain they're not independent anymore. Okay, okay. Like, and it it, it also goes to, to show that, like, yeah, it's it's like all I, I I don't think hot take as much as as I make like I lean on reviews like oh certain um um these are are like like. You don't need to um lie. It's just like re like reviewing things in general is kind of like a weird concept to to, to me. I'm in the fucking field, and I still yeah. don't understand <laughs> why. Like like I like like I don't like sure like back in the day like okay I'm taking this thing off. It's yeah, hot. do it, do <laughs> it, do it. Uh, back I'll put it on like in and out. Don't don't worry. Um. Uh, back in the day, like, um, reviewers were, like, to help you, like, just make d decisions, make yeah, yeah. D decisions, but now they're full-fledged, like, because, like, you'd be like, oh, back in the day, be like, oh, do I want the new G G G GTA? Let let's go on IGN, right? It says it's not good, it's not, like, it it's in between. That's what re reviewing used to be, be like, it, it just give you a guide on what the the product was and then now you are in the modern day where it's actually telling you to buy this or not like don't buy like there are i guess there are but... actually there are there are uh there are major publications out there that have in the title do not buy or buy they're like literally tell giving you instructions where the, that's it's true but it's always been that way like even when you think about like a car magazine for example in the 90s they were still doing that exact that was their objective it was still the goal was to do the same thing yeah and yeah but, but yeah because they're trying to sell something or they're trying to not sell sell something right yeah 
Like there's still so, the thing is like that's I agree that it's dirty, but it's the same dirty game just f- fucking be overt because the the influencers on TikTok gotta say hashtag ad, so I may as well just be straight up about this. Yeah, and it becomes just like now it's just like who is now influencing it all? Um, if you look at all of these, like look at all like. Fashion, for example, is a good example of this, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like ex celebrity wears one thing, and then now everybody wants to dress like that, right? Or to have that item. Uh, well, bruh, it's like it's like the Yeezy stuff, right? It's it's not necessarily about having revolutionary ideas. It's about making things that are not trendy look trendy, trendy. right? Yes, yeah, yeah. It's like your it's about, ripped up clothes ain't nothing new. It's just like, oh, it's different. Yeah, and like, 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 and and this is, yeah, okay. Now we're getting a bit too f- f- far away from, from the point. Okay, but okay. I you know, no, no. Let me just shoot it right back in in there. Bring it like we're right. we're the we're the orbit. We're an interstellar doing the orbit, and now we have to sling ourselves while I'm right okay. back into Earth. Okay, I'm following, I'm following. So, so it's, it's, it, 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 it's like ultimately these um, reviewers are there uh, to not just influence people's buying power, but to also tell them what to buy because they are now an arm of these com- companies. Did the advertising mm-hmm. arm. The, the P, as I said, the, the PR arm, and like we, as journalists, we're, we're basically told like, okay, not all of us. I don't know if I am or not. I haven't really felt that that way. I'm gonna get fired after this. Um, <laughs> but it's just like, it's like y- you should let these journal like 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 like, like let journalists do their job, but also don't love, let them influence everything. Like you can mm-hmm. like some, something that everybody hates. And that's what helps inspire creativity. Now, look, for example, Call of Duty. It's now becoming a stale thing. People, like, apparently the latest Call of Duty isn't that that good. I played it. It's okay. But I'm not telling anybody to be like, okay, play it because... Or hate on the game. Because it's just like... it's, it's, It's garbage. Because, like, from what I have felt, it is bad. But from what anybody else... Uh, picks up it may be the, the third thing because ultimately um rev- reviewers don't know what like aren't like reviewers aren't the average sort of like person Fair. Right? they have shit to do whereas the people who play who play cod for example don't have all have a, a lot of time and they can understand it goes back to my initial point but like they can uh, understand the game better than um re- viewers can and stuff so it's just yeah yeah and just like don't so, uh, don't let like this happen because somebody else is, is telling is, is is telling you. Don't you trust happen. them because they they everyone's human, you know. Like every yeah. no matter what the reviewer, the company, we all have our own interests. So you can take in someone's opinion, but those critics and all these people in the chain are gonna have an opinion, yeah. and then. I've got I've got a pop culture one before we close off our talking session. I got a pop culture one here for you, Raza. You ready? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is the inside nerd baseball. So Henry Cavill, right, is stepping down from The Witcher. First oh, off, two pronged. No. First part, how do you feel about it? Did you see my reaction? No, you feel or sad, you right? Feel so sad. topical like no. on topic of like media and critics controlling it. If you yeah. remember, when Henry Cavill first took the role, he had a whole speech about the only reason he would leave is if they deviated from the source materials and started doing some fuckery. Yeah. So. But it's, okay. Yeah. He left. He left. Yeah. So that means but, it's going to be fucked up. It's going to be Disney fied. It's going to be Netflix fied. Yeah, but also the other thing I think he really wanted to do is just Superman. You tell me he can't do Superman and The Witcher. That's the same build. What do you mean? He doesn't have to do much different. Is he? I he. I thought the only thing he dropped. He he. he I think he dropped like a, a couple other roles too. 
Oh, do you but, think he's no, going to get yoked are, for Superman? Do you think he's going to go like rock size? Uh, there's a meme hard like a, a meme headline where it's just like uh uh Henry somebody asked me oh um like I I had a great time playing a Gerald and it's like, as he squeezes into his into the su- su- Superman costume. So it's like yeah. asking him. As he's going in into the, the next one, but yeah, I do, I do think that's one of the reasons why. But it it also like a, a factor of everything. But but the media sort of ran with it. They were like, oh, it's because of Superman, it's because he's going to do Superman, which I don't think is entirely true. Yeah, that does it doesn't make sense because he did it while doing other stuff previously. Like I understand it's a priority role now. But the man's, they had to Photoshop his mustache out to be in Justice League. I don't think it's a priority like that to him, especially with the state of DC. And if he's a comic book nerd, he's savvy to like, okay, this shit is kind of worn out. So I don't really have to go ham on this, you know? And also because he also knows the Witcher too, as well. That's his thing. So, so then I think is, that's the drama. I'm going to bet that season that he's done is going to be whack. I bet it. I guarantee. Yeah, they're getting the C team. Not, not, not even the backup uh, Evan or Hemsworth or Worth brother, but like the... like the. They're getting like the, the C-list Hemsworth? The C-list Hemsworth. So, like, you know, and it is so subtle. So, like... They didn't put any time into like cast like we're like okay let's take some fucking let's not hire the next pretty boy because like you, like you can't I don't know it just and that's gonna be another thing because now they're already setting itself up to fail um and the, and then IGN the Guardian fucking CNN is gonna give it a ten out of ten but the actual yeah. fans are gonna be like oh fucking trash. Chris Hemsworth is, or uh, not Chris. See, I don't even know his name. Um, Liam. The one who was in. Liam. No. Liam. I'm ninety percent sure it's Liam. It's it, it's the youngest one. It's the one who's in, in the Hunger Games. Uh, okay, Henry Cavill. Leaving Witcher. Who is it? Who like, is it? I think it's like, it's like something whiter than Luke. No, it's, I'm telling you, it's Liam. Liam, I'm right, fam. Get out of what here. Liam? It's Liam. Okay, then. Okay, yeah, see? <laughs> Fuck with me, bro. Fuck with me. It's, sorry, I'm not... Ugh, this makes me sad, though, because it's just like... The Witcher is probably one of the few good Netflix shows. One of the few good. Really? I know. Highly- I know. It's not good. It's not a good proposition, but, like... Maybe the dude will carry it. I'm trying to say, like, I hope maybe he won't be too trash. But overall, the thing is, I think that it's not going to be scripted. Well, it's going to go Game of Thrones left, you know, bad left. I didn't end it with season four, I, I guarantee you. Guarantee you. Because it's fully Netflix produced, right? And now they're seeing the fucking Game of Thrones show. They're seeing the other show and they're panicking because they're going the route of a CW show, you know? Like, I don't think they're equipped for the IP that they had generated. Yeah, like, literally, Henry... Like, everybody kills it on that that show. And I was thinking, how is he going to interact with these high-caliber actors and actresses when he's, he's... His biggest thing was the Hunger Games. Or, no, 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 it, it wasn't the Hunger what? Games. It was the... The sequel to Independence Day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Liam Hemsworth, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, I don't... Like, he's like every other... Like, at least Henry Cavill felt like there was life in that role. Henry... uh, Luke Evans... Liam, fam. It's a four-letter white guy name. I know. I know it's hard, but let's get there. Liam, <laughs> Liam Hemsworth. Is Liam, Chris, and what's the, the third one's name? Like William or something? Or something, or something? Oh yeah, I think I think it's Will. It's got to be something like that. He was in Westworld. Yes. He was like, it's so funny. All three of them can like aren't, aren't like 
good actors. They're not that great of an actor. They don't. There's not. They're hey, what was? The, what's the name of that action mo- movie where Chris Hemsworth just sh- like saved a, a young brown boy? It was like a big buzz. He was. Uh, oh, extraction. 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 He's a yeah, good guy. He saves minorities in f- fighting zones that America initiated. It's just like it's just a <laughs> it's not enough shit. It's it's like not a bad <laughs> script, but it was like if you just not didn't pick like Middle East, maybe you could get away with it. But it's just I can't watch it and not no. think colonizer, colonizer, colonizer. You know what I mean? It's it, 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 it's easy money. <laughs> Money it, it wasn't that bad. I was like, it's medium, but it's just dumb and evil here. It's like, come on, come on. But can't, can't, can't. We've been talking about the Hemsworth too long. I was gonna de, I'm derobing, physically and and metaphorically for y'all. What the but fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we've got a commercial break coming up. This is where one day we're gonna be famous. We're gonna actually have ads in here, but right now you're gonna see an ad for our YouTube video, which just came out this week. You can check it out on the Marching Into Madness YouTube channel. What? Last week. You went on Friday. I would, uh, the math kinda works out. <laughs> you went last week. <laughs> it kinda works out. Be right back. Be right back. As you mentioned before, this guy ruined my whole flow. We're, we're doing essays now on what, you guessed it, K-pop music. If you don't know what, what K-pop music is, well, fuck you. We're going to tell you right now. K-pop music is Korean pop music from, you guessed it, Korea. Korea. Uh, congratulations, congratulations, you're a cultured person now, give yourself a, a pat on the back. Yeah, yeah, and what better way to educate you on this topic of Korean culture than two North American straight dudes who know nothing about musicals. And together, we grow. We learn and we grow as a family. To- together. That's why we march into men. That's why we're fast and furious. We're family. 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 Well, as you mentioned before, this guy ruined my whole flow. We're, we're doing that. All right, kids, we're at our new segment. This is our TikTok segment where we try to introduce... <laughs> <laughs> where we try to introduce news that we enjoy and then bring some sources which you can find in the description afterwards and this will get us back to the heart of why we started this shit so same shit different day you talk some shit at first and then we come here and uh give you some some valuable information hopefully hopefully I'll look at at my phone for it though because <laughs> oh, thank you all, the all right early access type beat things broken and here, I forgot, I gotta put Bailey on. Here's your production, I'll have to cut this out. Movie time. Okay. My new story for the day. And I'm gonna keep this one simple since I choked last time. <laughs> well, I, well I, I was browsing the interwebs. I, I found one that really caught my eye just because I was interested. So, like, what's really good with these headlines that are saying, like, Jack Dorsey v. Elon because Jack Dorsey has some new project and Elon owns Twitter. I'll spare the summary. We all know Elon is now our Twitter god. Like, what is context anyways? Recently, you may have seen the clickbait headlines like, ex-Twitter CEO takes on Elon with new app. And, And here, I'll attach a photo. You'll see this in post. This is Jack Dorsey. He looks like what you would expect the founder of Twitter to look like. Number one, though, when they're saying, like, they're going to battle. What Jack Dorsey has here, they just announced the first beta test. So it's not like some magical social media platform that's already ready to go. So there's one clickbait you got there. Number two, Twitter funded the development of this protocol that he's working on. So it still technically has their name on it. So even though this is happening, it's not guaranteed that Jackie's going to be Elon's competition. In fact, it's called the Blue Sky Protocol and is more so conceptualized as a network approach to social media. Think if you combined Twitter and Discord in one application. Now that's oversimplified, but basically you'd be able to email, message, and host your own servers all in one comprehensive decentralized network so that not any one governing body is in charge of it. 
So, but cool possibilities in- on the horizon, as I think people on all sides of the spectrum would say that social media is becoming fairly stale, but a lot of questions on how that would work, and you should watch out for this clickbait headline. Now, talking points, Raza. It could be a waste of time. It could be very cool. In the articles I was reading from years ago, Jack Dorsey himself admitted this isn't advertiser-friendly and likely is not very profitable. So even if it is a cool infrastructure and a great idea, it's not guaranteed anyone's going to pick this shit up. So, Rosa, you think anyone, even if it's a, it seems like it might be a competition, you think anyone would pick that idea up? No. Oh, like, imagine saying, hey, I'm going to make a new social media site. Everybody's going to be like, oh, great, another fucking app. Another f- fucking thing. Nobody's going to jump to this thing unless you're like a nerd, right? Well, and one I like, can't make money with, right? He, they might be like, what? great concept, but Discord, even Discord has Nitro and has functions to be profitable, you know? So well, as Twitter soon as... Has Twitter and the, exactly. So then you introduce this one where Jack's like, here, you're going to make less money, but it's going to be cooler and ideally more people use it. Elon's going to be like, no, I'm I'm here to take all the lithium out of the world. You're all the friends, eh? <laughs> Elon and Jack. Well, like that's here. that's good. Really? Yeah, they're actually good friends. And Elon has a, he, I think he has a stake in this. I believe so. Because that's a cooler follow-up, then maybe it will be implemented. I had no, I, I didn't find any proof of that. I thought they were at odds from old articles I read, like, from years ago. What are you, two of the richest people at odds with each other? What are you going to fucking argue about? Who's, who, 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 who can bankrupt their entire company the fastest? <laughs> that's fair. I think because they're both interested, because Elon is notoriously an NFT bro. Yeah, I you, think. Uh, did, did you hear what he's doing with Twitter? Uh, the twenty dollar verification fee, treating it like like NFTs now. They pay twenty dollars a month to have a fucking check mark beside your name. What is NFTs? A thing you don't even own. And this, the Jack Dorsey's whole thing is about decentralization. So I think it's really going to be like certificate based, like certificates to get into a server. And he's been specifically saying that way you don't have to have one moderating body. If you are entering the CNN server, then the CNN server is responsible for it. And no one owns it. It's just like another version of the internet, but a social media. So the issue with that now a lot of bad stuff can happen because nobody can s- s- police it. There's no governing. But, oh, d- d- am I? Did I hit something? No, you hit the point. That's the true. That's the cool. That's the really fucked up issue of it, right? Like you could get such extreme hate bubbles because, in a way, what they want to remove is virality. So content gaining traction in the way that it does, just based on outrage and hate machines. But historically, that's part of culture, bro. Like hate machines and outrage and people having a consensus opinion. As much as it fucking sucks, it needs to exist in some degree. Like that's the one good part about democracy. Like you need to have freedom of speech and opinion so that you you can create joined ones when you create a completely decentralized market where nobody can fuck with each other that's like the most extreme capitalism where then if you want to believe that certain people shouldn't exist you're going to be able to exist in that bubble infinitely and not have anyone challenge your lane of thought well that sort of like let's so so while democracy does allow that, I agree. You're you're not wrong about the but democracy also allows that stuff to grow. Because they're saying you can do whatever you want, have that freedom, right? But they allow because it to happen. That's our argument from last week, and it's where you're right. It's where you're right, because democracy is inevitably tied to the capitalism which breeds that free market we should leave everybody the fuck alone atmosphere. And, and look what's happening. We're not really leaving anybody alone. We're just making it harder for poor people to get to to get by. And we're no, it's just a broken system. Now, yeah. So on the logistics of it, right? That sounds massive, and no one's gonna be able to police it. 
you have any yeah. questions about that being even like ethically viable? I'm gonna say, what what happens with the data? Is it is it is that decentralized? According too, to or? the articles that I read, it is supposed to be, but considering it's funded by Twitter, and he's saying it's not profitable, someone's gonna want to make money. So I highly doubt that's gonna be a consistent. See, like all of these no no matter. Speaking about, yeah, so, this, so something that came into mind, there is this new app, social media thing, I forget what they call called, uh, Mastodon. I saw them trending on mm -hmm. Twitter and they're like decentralized social media where nobody owns anything. It's just you can do whatever, like you can have the s s safety of this if you join us. Apparently, uh, they had an influx of new users today, but it's, it's the same concept. Of what is this? Night sky, blue sky, what, blue sky, what the blue sky, blue, blue sky. What is with these names, by, by the way? Fucking only leave to to Jack Dorsey who sleeps on one hour a day, and then it comes. I think that one was name. a reference to the blue of Twitter. Why did he? Because he he, just... he wants it to be like a Twitter or Reddit to the extreme, kind of where it's multimedia forums. He sees it as a Twitter-like experience where you're able to express your opinions without, like, Facebook filters. Isn't Reddit already that, though? They're, like, literally... It's just Twitter. But, but you don't have live more... messaging services. There's no... Tr the trending tags oh. aren't as effective. And blah, blah, no. blah, blah, blah. All I the, agree with you. It fixes that, and then bam, Jack Dorsey's fucking out of business. Dollars. Out of business, yeah. So <laughs> they're at the point. We're at the point now where we're literally just beating other companies to the finish line. In a way, in a way. Because what's innovative about blue, a blue, a blue sky? They're just combining other shit. Ideally, technically, because he had figured he announced it and Twitter funded it in 2017. And this was well before he was decided to be leaving as the CEO. So it was something that he knew he was going to stay committed to even when he stepped down as CEO and even as Elon would have taken over. So this is something that's interesting that you're saying they are in cahoots about it, especially with all the headlines because that makes it sound like a PR machine because it was expressly funded by Twitter and Twitter said they would keep paying for it even if they lose money on it after he left as CEO. So there's something fishy here about what the intentions are for it. And, and, and that's because you, you're making that like assumption based on the f f fact that Elon is now there and now like in there. And they're, he, they, yeah, there's these headlines that they're competing, but Twitter still own, owns it. Uh, he's yeah, still yeah. Elon can still say what happens to it. He, if they're yeah. buddies, then maybe he'll be a pal and say whatever, do what you want. But these clickbait headlines are saying Elon versus Jack, and it's like no, kind of, kind of Jack kind of has Elon to. Yeah, it's, it's Elon, Elon and Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, now Jack Dor uh, Jack can come back and be like, yeah, I'm going to make so something else, and then people will, will come there. Fucking s s call it a Silicon Valley revolution, if you want to call it like that. But then I found out, like, oh, they are playing on the same team. Not like, oh, fucking, it's us against the rich. No, literally, Jack Dorsey and Elon Musk are, like, on speed dial on each other's phones right so uh, they're kind of, i don't know how close they are but from this i this the stuff that i have read is just they have a friendship and it's been a, it's been like that for like a minute now yeah like, and like the, the the, the, the secondary point. thing of why it's a headline and like why i pointed out that as number two is like it's just a protocol like it's the nerd shit like it's literally like he's trying to make a new version of an rss feed like it's a new programming language he's not coming out like i have a branded package for social media and here's my user interface it's like no here i have a system that can effectively send messages and share posts does it work 
that is the stage that is at. So it's like as, even those clickbait headlines saying, yeah, the Jack versus him. It's like there's been no articles where it's been set as an established social media platform. It's just been pitched as a protocol for coding language. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was yes. just strip, strip, uh, okay. That's I learned. Something it's the blue everything. sky protocol. So it's like kind of like how okay. Discord has to. Discord's value is it creates a program that can efficiently host these servers and communicate the messages. But like a Discord is using very traditional systems like VoIP systems that have already existed for a long time. Now I don't know exactly yeah. the lingo, but those are traditional yeah. ones. Jack is okay. being a a super genius and writing a new one that is supposed to be more efficient. And then because it's decentralized, rather than, say, the Discord having to bounce back and forth, it should be a whole network. It would be like the Tor router that each of these servers are hosting everything connected rather than yes. having to come back to one mother system. Yeah, I, I see what, what you're saying. So it's, it's more efficient that way, but at the same time... It's it not a things. social media. It's, it's just a thing to make things it's work. A data, it's a data yeah. center or data point or something, something like that. Also, <laughs> guys, for our audio listeners, Bailey, his hand gestures painted a very good image, so I, I, I understood <laughs> that he was talking. Uh, no, yeah, but go I, watch I the do... stream. Go watch the YouTube. Sorry, Raza, go. Yeah. I do agree. It's just like, uh, it's going to be interesting if it takes off. It, it'll be... I think, if anything, it'll be just like an extension of Twitter. It won't, it won't be a, it, its own thing. It'll be like, oh, now, now people, like, you know how on Twitter people can't have spaces? I think it'll be a steroided version of that. Just that one ability where you can have your own space from your own server and allow anybody that, that you want to come in. And the best part is that nobody's listening. Nobody's listening to you in quotations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nobody, nobody except the NSA. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a decentralized, Bailey. <laughs> Look, hey, how many apes do, do, do you own? 17. I I I copied them off uh 4chan last night. Oh. Oh. You went there? I just go on Twitter. It's all there. <laughs> less work, <laughs> less work. Yeah, I don't. I just type in hashtag NFT and they can come up. Anyway, so Bailey's story. I'm gonna read off of my phone because it's this game is not working. Letting me, you know, have the screen up and look look at a Google Doc at the same time. But uh, so Bailey's whole story was about capitalism and how it's coming down on us pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, so mine is about the literal polar opposite of that. It's, it, 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 it's a little more serious. And if you guys have seen an earlier work, we're not big fans of this guy, but we do love his, his last name and love the f fact that he, he, he got Rona like four times and still said Rona isn't real. Bolson oh, butt face. Died. Bolson yeah. butt face. Okay. Bolsonaro, yeah. So call back to our earlier episodes for our our longtime fans of 2019. Uh, so leftist president, I'm gonna butcher this name. So Lu Lu Luis Inciano Lua de Silva, let's call him Lula, has has beaten far right president B Bolson buttface. That's what there we're you calling go. him, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. This uh, election has won, uh, is the biggest election in, and one of the biggest elections in Brazil's his history because it, it's the end of the far right a regime that Bolsonaro ha had uh, for, I think, two years prior. The election uh, results were 59%. Point 50, he narr Lula narrowly won by 50% with B Bolsonaro losing by 49 percent and there was a small percentage a uh, margin of error there it was still pre pretty close this comes after lula was jailed on what, what it seems to be alleged uh corruption cases that were initially dropped and uh he was in, in jail for over 500 100 days during that time he was not allowed to to run but then when his his conviction was overruled 
the government said, fine, you go, you can run. And he tapped into the people's emotions and his old school like rhetoric, workers' rights, uh, back to the union, real socialist stuff. And he's now, uh, and Brazil is now gone to uh, left. Uh, this has started, uh, this is the, the latest of the pink um, revolution, or I think it's a pink, pink wave, which means Latin American countries that have turned left over the last, I think, uh, several years. So, some questions I have mm-hmm. for the audience here. Uh, are so I'll, I'll go by one by one here. So, yes, are we are we in the era of extremes where one country, like say for Italy, for example, they have elected a person who thinks Mussolini was a chill dude i'm not can i say say is he as bad as the other guy i can't say mussolini's name i can't say that guy's name right yeah no i he's i think you can say mussolini's name i think i i don't think they're smart enough for that okay so for example italy uh has uh elected a, a far right um uh president who says Mussolini was a chill dude and apparently has some relations to me, me, that guy. Uh, are So going back, are we in the era extremes where now it's becoming countries either vote for far left leaders or far right live, live, live leaders? Is there no sort of like center left or center right uh, spectrum anymore? I think you are correct there. But I think it is also because you are correct about many of your other beliefs. I think that is a victim of the two-party system instilled by colonialism and democracy. And I am not trying to be like an extremist, but like something I read about before is like a lot of environmentalism even, right? We see it as another platform issue. But if we stepped back for a moment and saw environmentalism as like another point on the political spectrum, per se, and opened our ideas towards like what can influence our political biases, then we wouldn't be so stuck to like an extreme left or an extreme right. But since we're only given two two options, since we're only given two options, you either got to go fucking boot on the neck or daisies and flowers. Exactly. It's either you're with us or you're against us type of mentality, which in certain regards, that sort of mindset does work. Uh, You don't want to associate with people who think you are a lesser human, obviously. But Mm -hmm. for everything, it's just like, as you said, like, oh, these climate change things. It's just like you should look, take a bigger picture and see what's the, uh, what, what you, you can bring to the center point now i as bailey will make f- f- fun of me and i have <laughs> about this, i don't like centrists they don't really make decision they're really not good with decision making it's it either it's and it's some reason always agrees <laughs> with, with the, the center right on the sp- 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 spectrum but yeah, it just um, it just we have let these issues become so polarizing where we can't really talk about what's what's the important thing that brings it all to together. As I said before, it's only worked for certain issues, but a lot of issues that it doesn't work for because again, they are dealing with like race, culture, all that stuff. You can't really it's either that stuff. I think is a little bit more convoluted and is not mm-hmm. as simple. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that I'd be like, yeah, it's like, oh, you're either against climate change or you're for it. And that's like how it should be. I think it depends on the, on, yeah. on the context of the situation. And I think that's also like considering the context of Brazil, it's an important one, right? The fucking rainforest <laughs> and Bolson Buttface here was Captain Chainsaw, bro. You know what I mean? So these things really should be influential. He literally called him himself that. Yeah, which is a wild yeah. fact. I can't believe he found that one out. Yeah, I just, it's, it's, 
Ultimately, yeah, I think you are correct, and then I also think it's bad for third party viewing as well as international politics because now we're looking as North Americans like oh here we go we got another either C word revolutionary or a dictator there's one or the other because it's a second world now, country so now my this goes into my next point uh, what does this mean for us in North America since we don't understand where North America is kind of special because we do live in a bubble we, uh, like, with the ex exception of, of Mexico, but Canada and North America have literally not known much about outside of d democracy or capitalism, mm -hmm. where all the other countries in the world have, have gone through their own share of, revolu of revolutions and stuff. So how well, what does it mean for us when we see, hey, there's another socialist country, another country that has now gone full socialism do we as you say use a big uh c word or do we you know just uh, let them be and then like let them ruin ruin their own life and then we, we can liberate them in quotations I'm using some heavy language here <laughs> i'm trying to yeah so them. i'm gonna go first hot take i'm gonna go first hot take and then i'll go legit um Hot take. First off, yeah, uh, we're not gonna accept it. Everyone's gonna go full there. But I, um, that's the CIA. That's the all the hidden bodies back there. They're gonna be like, okay, we don't like this. Let's go metal. But I think yeah. publicly, it will be the latter, and more realistically, it will be the latter. It will be a slow. Oh look, Bolsonaro's out, and especially when we're talking about the influence of Trumpito. It's going to be like, oh, look, one of Trump's mans is out, and now look at how much disarray the country is in. Their economics are down because they have a C-word leader. You know what I mean? That like yeah. It will be a slow decline, much like they've done with Colombia and Bolivia and Chile. You know what I mean? Like America or just the C-word? I would say personally... I would say America, but I don't. That's a personal opinion and not a factual opinion. <laughs> not, I mean, there's many things <laughs> that would back you up, though. That's the thing. There's actual. The Bay of Pigs. Yeah. Fucking, an actual historical evidence. The CIA got their. Uh, <laughs> you may know this about stream guys, but Bailey and I aren't really. We're not really liberals here. We're just fucking real. Looney, loonies here um uh like but like the bay of pigs was the biggest slap in the face for the cia right so like who's to say that won't happen again and now the whole a, a new thing will happen but it, i think it's harder to do in a country as big as brazil where the support is massive uh to do those things because if it happens it's gonna be it'll go back it'll, it'll just it'll just either free lula or they'll get a guy who has the same sort of views as, as well as, as we researched in our previous video which is old and on our youtube channel it's we i it's still a good video we just were out of fashion with the format but brazil has like they're critical to the agriculture of north america so no matter what even if it's not say some governing body at least financial interests will have their fingers in the ongoings of that, and that will inevitably lead to some sketchy shit going on in terms of manipulating politics in a country that already has difficulties controlling corruption. Brazil. Brazil has yes. the difficulty of... And okay, I'm, I'm going to latch on, on that, too. Yes, I agree. Well, um, say, I mean, that's even in the simplest sense. Let's not even go Sopranos with it. Say... I'm working for a meat lobbying organization. Would I not then want to donate new chainsaws to the logging company my friend owns in South America? You know what I mean? Right. right. Like, you... there's certain little gateways of influencing what you want to happen for your industry to happen without it being some black site scary thing that you imagine in the movies. 
So you typically don't even need the CIA. So technically, you won't even need the CIA to let that happen. And and if if the CIA wants to take a um reward, they can literally just come come in at the end and be like, hey, we're gonna do some some a Navy SEAL type shit here. Yeah, exactly. Well, if they're doing the high level spy shit, right? All you gotta do is be a billionaire and offer the right guy enough money. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like we're watching way too much movies. We're watching way too many movies like like that. All right. So my next point is with Europe going on the other way of, of the political sp spectrum, will yeah, yeah. we be seeing contrasting views from, like, say, Italy, for example, to Brazil, uh, based on their socio and economical behavior in, like, l let's say, a year after this. I think in some ways, but I think that is more due to the global political environment at the moment. Say Spain has been in riots for the past fucking five years to a decade now. Like, as soon yeah. as you get a socialist power in where now there have been already struggles between right and left extremist parties in France as well. It's only going to become a more highly debated issue and a hot topic in those countries. So I think like places like Italy and Greece, where they're having like severe still financial impacts from our last recession, as we might be entering another one. Sure. Yeah, I think it will come into play. So, so what you're what you're saying, Brazil? So Brazil, in comparison, will uh, be different than it is now. Is that what you're also? No, because oh, I, 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 all of that. Like, I think it will be influenced by the international scene. Yes, because of our conspiracies before, as well as the last point I made. I think because it will influence other politics sets. Of like, oh, look, a socialist person got in power, so it might cause some turmoil. And then the conspiracy shit of like. There's going to be a lot of interest trying to, like, make sure they get what they want still. Yes. I think that's right. Because it's, it's, it because, like, typically socialist countries have always kind of, like, stuck it to capitalist countries. And look what's happening to Venezuela. You can, yeah, and the other thing, like, instead of, like, coup, or the, the, the C word, shit, instead of that happening, we may just get economic san sanctions as well. What The same thing is that Cuba is being hit with, yet they're fucking mm -hmm. being so nice to the U.S. by offering them Rona aid and, and everything. But so it's like... It's, well, that's exactly that. The Venezuela is a good example, right? Because that was an example of meddling. There was then a socialist power got the influence over the government, but then someone was able to convince them that the national privatization of the oil market was a good idea. And maybe it was from that political leader's perspective at the time. But look at how easy it was to manipulate the market from outside powers immediately after that. Uh, so, like, I think in order for Brazil to, you know, not be, uh, not be, like, like easily manipulated is to, like, you know, just purge the entire, like, government of just, no, but, like, in, in a sense of bring people. Purge, purge, under, purge, purge. Purge, purge. <laughs> not in that sense, but, like, like literally, like, Firing them, like tell them you, you like you're like you're not you you're you have interests now from like outside of the country. You're not a fucking mm -hmm. billion. So like I I think they should like create because like this is I don't know this may not create a vacuum, but it it also may. Uh, but it just Brazil Brazil is surrounded by other socialist countries. Is it? It's the tip of, of the iceberg, right? So, like, what happens when a whole continent is, like, 80% so, so, so socialist, right? Uh, the, it, it gets harder for the, the USA to give them freedom, uh, right? So, I think, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I think we're going to be seeing a very different sort of, like, Latin America. A, a Latin America that... The, that we won't be able to like comprehend. Yeah, because oh, 
I think it has a lot to do with your theories of Western influence losing its power because even when you're like looking at Latin America, who has the most influential music market now? Not us. They do, right? Like Latin American no. music. No, not anymore. Latin American <laughs> music is the top industry now. So it's yeah. like sp Spanish songs from Mexico and Brazil are the hit music now, technically. Yeah. And and no one really likes these like propaganda movies like Z Z Zero Dark Thirty anymore. It's hard to like, cause like, if the public is on board, then hey, bam, hey, it's easy. Hey, to, hey, to hey, 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 hey. I don't know if you remember, but we just verified how good Chris Hemsworth was in Extraction. So you're right. Next, we are throwing to a quick commercial break. We just threw out our K-pop video last week. If you pop on our YouTube channel, it's right there. We got one more ad for it. I'll have a new ad set up for you next week. Maybe something fancy. Maybe follow our TikTok. Who knows? I'll be right back. Be right back. Be right back. Be right back. I guarantee that they have rating systems. That, that, that's like some high school stuff, eh? Guarantee that's it. like some like, oh, which of your friends has, has a biggest dong? It wouldn't be I me. Didn't, I didn't do that. It wouldn't be me. I didn't have those kinds of charts, Raza. I would always lose. That's good to know. That's right. You you gotta look look the part, dress the part, sound the part, and just be the part because you'll always be doing something because you're a multifaceted artiste. In the Korean pop music in industry. But we'll go down this rabbit hole another time. Because that world just won't make sense until we give you way more context on this topic. I guarantee that they have rating systems. Doubt. Going live. Roz has been wishing for children tonight, so that's why we had to take a quick break. We got back from commercial break. Roz was tending to more kids okay. at his door. Lots of I'm kids at Ross's door. It's raining, so that we only have one. That's actually kind of sad. I'm not going to be that much of a dick about it. That's I feel bad for the kiddos. <laughs> I don't. More chocolate? For me. Back in my I day, like... I used to have to get yeah. icicles on my nipples just to get an arrow bar. Wait, what? What? So, uh, an adult told you to show him you, 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 your nips? Only to prove whether or not they are icicle ridden. Okay. Okay, but so okay. guys, um, guys, 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 I got a quick ad. This, this, this one isn't like an ad break, but it's an announcement of our new segment. How many ads do Bro. we have? Bro, this ain't an ad. You remember we're doing the submitted news segment and we need to get people to submit some news? That's that's the, didn't submit the news. Sorry, <laughs> that's OK. We didn't get any comments. But what we want to do is we just did those two news segments. If you guys DM us, send a comment, shoot an email to marching into madness at Gmail dot com. We want to start clipping these bits and we want to like participate in a, like looking into weird stories that you think deserve looking into. We, as you can see, we like to do a bit of research, apply our journalism skills. So if you want to participate in that with us. All you have to do is shoot us your ideas because we're super down for it. I don't know about Raza, but I kind of need some extra creative input, you know, you know. Thank you, Raza. Good backup. Uh, Appreciate it. That's I it, guys. I just blacked out there for a second. And this is what happens on Halloween episodes because Raza got too drunk on the weekend and so did I, but I'm a healthy boy. So if you want to join us and get two birds stoned at once, you can submit stories that you find interesting to us anytime. And we're looking at you, regular listeners. We got we got you lurkers. Pop in. All right. All next. You. Next. Raza, we're closing it out. We got a little bit more uh, fucking podcast talking here to do, though. So when we're going back to, like, reviewers influencing the market and all of this stuff being something that creates bias when we're talking about video games and movies and what people want to get into. What are some bangers that don't feel right? 
So can you name a movie or a piece of media that you know is like quite cringe or mega cringe as one would say when he's uh, cringily writing? Um, <laughs> can you name a movie that you think you know is cringe but you still like it? Oh. There's so many. Fuck. <laughs> so many. Uh, Come on. Come Blockers, blockers. Uh, the movie, movie with John Cena, and whatever. Ooh. Uh, it's like, uh, it's pretty funny. That's a, I was la It's actually jokes. It's it's, <laughs> it's pretty. I really like that that. That's movie. a weird call out. That's that's a weird call out. Yeah, I was just thinking. I was just thinking about that 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 mo 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 movie the other day. It's got like uh, these parents. Are trying to make sure their kids don't have uh, don't do the deed at, at prom, and so they f f find out and they try to stop it, but then they can't stop it because it happened. I'm... And it's there's a there's a there's a nice little moment of like, mom, dad, this is gonna happen. I'm a growing person. This is gonna happen irregardless of what you want, all right? <laughs> to me, I'm just like, you're going back to Pakistan. This, this is not gonna happen. And they, and there's a, a brown girl in it too. It's a tough one for me to choose what my most cringy one would be. I think I have to go to those propaganda movies because I liked so many of the propaganda movies, you know? Yeah. You are a fed. You are so, a fed. I like. I think one I would say that I liked as a kid that was a guilty pleasure that I hate that I like it. You ready for this one? Okay. It's, it's Shooter with Mark Wahlberg. Oh, you're. That's like one of my dad's favorite. Movies. I liked that as a kid. I really liked it, and it's so cringe. Everybody like like it's like it's like the forty year old dad move. move I think. I it's think. Got, like, no oh no, it's got good ratings. I was gonna say because when I was a kid, the other movie I liked a lot as a kid, and this explains a lot. Ross, are you ready for this? You ready for this one? Yeah. Ferris Bueller. Everybody likes it. Fer Everybody Ferris likes Bueller. it. I used to watch that shit on repeat as a kid. I thought that was a little trash. You didn't know Ferris Bueller was one of the most iconic movies of all time. It's part of that Breakfast Club type. John, like people yeah it's john carpenter yeah. yeah john carpenter and like uh the cast was like i personally thought i don't really care for it too too fucking long for that type of, of movie by the way it was way too long it's like yeah. almost two and a half hours long i was like what the fuck why is it so long i'm trying to think of like what if you go to like a old school movie like uh, role models, role models with Paul Rudd and the dude from American Pie. That was a good movie. You know what I mean? Movie. Like that's a good I movie that's that. rated poorly. You know? I saw it like a couple weeks ago. Oh, it's so funny! And the, and the, and the LARPing thing, they they do at at, at the end. He dresses up Yo, like, like kid. What happened to that kid, bro? He was everywhere. Where the fuck is that kid? Same. And then uh, McLovin has his own like podcast and st st stuff now. Oh, yeah. McLovin's just famous being himself. He doesn't have to do shit. Yeah. Why bother? But I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. Like, it. Well, more importantly, what, what happened to Sean Michael Murray? The last thing I, I saw him in was in a lethal up in TV show. He just. Sean Malcolm Murray? Is that the title? The American Sean, Pie guy? Yeah, or Shawn Michael or something like that. I got uh, I got American Pie actors Googling, Googling, Googling. Okay. Sean William Scott. Sean William, it was Sean. But yeah, he 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 wanted to, to do serious roles, but apparently this is what happens when well, one year your typecast as Stifler's mom. Or Oh, he's been on TV band. stuff recently. He's had a bunch of TV roles. That's good. I mean, he is kind of 
funny, but it's weird because like him and Paul Rudd were both very good in that. Movie. I fuck man. I watched so many stereotypical YouTube videos about this back in the day, and I don't remember any of the info. It's like, why isn't Sean Michael Murray in any of your favorite movies anymore? You remember? Was it the Duke Dukes of Hazard remake he was in? Yeah, Dukes of Hazard. Uh, yeah, with with Owen Wilson's brother. Uh, yeah, I, I I think yeah. Wow. I used to. I watched that shit. That's a problematic one too. I never really. I don't. Dukes of Hazard was, was kind of lame, though. It was it was kind of cringe, cringe. But what a lot of people don't know, he he gets uh, he's been getting money because he was in a couple of the Ice Ages, as background characters. Oh. So he's been getting mad residuals from Ice Age for time and American Pie. You know, that's easy money. That's like retirement money. He was in a. He he would be good in a horror. Like in one of those scary movies, like a, like a, a slasher. His IMDb has titles that seem like in Bloodline, yeah. American Pie, Reunion. I play a crazy white guy because I'm a crazy white guy. Thanks, <laughs> <Sizzler's mom. laughs> Okay, so opposite, right? Quick before we close out. And I gotta get the tweet of the I'm, week set up. I'm, I'm, okay. Give me a poorly rated movie that the public loves. Fuck. I had one too. It's like a Nick Cage one. Shit. Um. Oh, the bees one. No, 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 fucking. That everybody lo lo loves? Yeah. That everyone loves. Fuck, man. Uh, fucking... The Fast and Furious. Like, the f first one. The Fast and the Furious is rated poorly? I think so. I don't believe that. Or Tokyo Fast. Drift, specifically. Tokyo Drift is a good choice. I think you can say that. I think that's yeah. a good choice. I'll give you a Tokyo Drift. All right, I'll give you a Tokyo Drift. That's acceptable. And, and, then, and then the Fast and Furious brings back the Tokyo Drift cast in like two, one or two Fast and Furious moves ago. Like the the seventh one, that brought back half the cast. Except for Gal oh, yeah. because she's, you know, dead. Because they movies. knew everyone liked it. Even Carlos Sainz this weekend referenced it. What? How about homie needs to worry about getting back in pole position rather than fucking. Yo, up. he was doing good this weekend. Get, leave Car, yeah, leave my did, Carlos alone. You, you, you know who did good this weekend, boy? Fucking Danny. Yeah, where he been all season? Now he's out of a drive, kid. I know. What was this fucking all season, man? Now he's gonna be. Apparently, now he's he's rumored to be. A Red Bull's replacement driver. Dry, dry, dry. He's being passed around, by the way. Because <laughs> everyone likes him. They all still want him to be around. And and I guarantee the FAA still wants him around because he's a, ca he's a cash grab. The more he's a celebrity. You want Danny to be in the garage. He's like the only personable, yeah, only personable one, only personable, like, racer. He, the fact that he's more human than Lewis Hamilton is... Funny as fuck because he doesn't. I bet Danny Ricardo do, does not have the same uh, media training. Yeah, I watch. I have F1 TV and they kind of like groom you with who they want as the new fan favorite. Um, I bet you come and sit there. Oh, I have F1 TV. Oh, I have F1 TV. Oh. <laughs> All last year, they're like, oh, here's Alex Albin with us. Oh, here's Alex Albin to provide his opinion. It's like, oh, you really want him to have a driver's seat next year. <laughs> so I guarantee Danny, he won't be driving. He'll be the reserve driver, but then he'll be in that commentary box. Boy, after every race, Danny's gonna be suiting this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's got like the best job now. He doesn't even even have to drive. He can get paid so so much to just talk about what he he, he likes. Because they always they, they have on F1 TV. They have the three commentators, and then they get one of the reserve drivers to come through and chat. 
but they make oh. sure that they're personable because like half the reserve drivers don't want to talk on camera. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, it's also not only if they don't know how to or if they don't want to talk on camera. They also don't want to don't know how to talk on camera. Yeah. Did you see the boxing fight that sort of switch topics? But did you see Jake, it? Jake Paul, Either. Jake Paul, this is good podcast material. So let's keep it going. We got Jake Paul uh, Anderson uh, Silva. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Um, go to show how little I I care about it. But uh, uh, I was um, my friend. He he was just messaging me like, "Yo, did did did, did, did you watch the fight?" He's like, "Bro, I couldn't even tell you where I was on Saturday. Let let alone the f- fight." So, um, from what I gather, uh, yeah, it's just another one of the of those f- fights that out of his prime. It's- but the, the difference with this one is that um, uh, S- Silva went the distance. It wasn't a knockout. So uh, uh, from what social media is, is telling me, this is social. T- t- again, I have no investment in this. So if you yell at me over this, I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't care. But no, not you. Go, 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 audience, go, 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 go. But what they're saying is, oh, oh, because of that length, we could see uh, Paul's uh, Jake Paul's cracks show more because he doesn't usually go for long fights. He, it's usually like within the first couple seconds or first minute or two, uh, norm- normally. But but for this one, uh, it was like, oh, he 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 only has trained for one, yeah, round and then past that he becomes sort of like and then the reason it's a big deal for anderson silva is a he already had a weak chin from his ufc days and b anderson silva is an old fucking man who wasn't a boxer he was a ufc fighter so since he's an old man and he went eight rounds and he wasn't a boxer that's like you know maybe don't hold the biggest w but you can walk away feeling okay about yourself but again, bro, it doesn't. I think, <laughs> think, I um, think, I think it, these fights are not like, you know, confident tw- fights. Twitter and yeah. YouTube are both suggesting so that you don't have to put it on you. I am seeing the internet suggesting that it is rigged. Okay, well, if you if watch the video fight, of Anderson getting knocked out, you watch the video of Anderson getting knocked out. He doesn't go limp. That's what everyone points at. He just kind of like stumbles and looks like he got knocked out, but his all of his legs are still like flexed. Like you, if you're knocked out, you go fucking at least for a moment. But he's like yeah. fully just kind of controlling his fall the whole time. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's the same same sort of like narrative of like the other f- f- fights where it's like, oh, they're also rigged. And shit. So it's like I don't, I I I wouldn't hold it past this team to be like, oh yeah, fucking um, he he like what my what my friend was saying like oh he's he he's just doing this because he he wants to make himself the face of boxing. So the longer he does this, the more training he gets. So when he goes for an actual like a real fight against in, in like a fall. A guy who's actually in the industry who's, who's currently do, uh, doing it, it'll be easier for for him to, to mm-hmm. fight because he it's has practice. all this sort of like practice. So yeah, like and then to me, I'm just like, oh fucking. So now TikTok and and YouTube has taken over over, over boxing. What does that say about about the sport, right? So it was always a cash industry. It was always a motherfuckers can't drive like that. Motherfuckers need that training. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> This you ain't as pretty as me, motherfuckers. Exactly. Ain't as pretty as me. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we cry ourselves to sleep because we think about how much money that Jake Paul has in comparison to us, I would like to present you with the tweet of the week, Raza. Yeah, it took me so long to find one. Holy fuck! Ever since so, my account got suspended. With Daddy Musk, my account may come back. So, Wish yeah, it's, uh, it's so long, Papa Dorsey. So, yeah, for you audio listeners, it says, "Which Jedi Council member was packing the most meat?" I can, 
My um, will, uh, my theory is Yoda because he's short. That's got to be the, the. You're wrong. You're wrong, and that's why I'm oh. cutting you off. He's too tiny. Oh. It doesn't make sense. I vote for the guy with the really long forehead. You know, no, I disagree. Because you, because you, uh, Yoda, how is he so powerful? Right? How is he a grand? He's wizard, centered he with the of... force. They're, 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 if you forget, they're monk. they're monks. They're celibate monks. Yeah, but he can also have a giant wang and be celibate at the same time. Sure, the alien guy also has a. He probably has a. a, 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 a his, 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 if it's alien, not the. Alien. If it's not him, it's Kit Fisto. Kit Fisto. You're making that name up, aren't you? No. No. K I T. F I S T O, Kit Fisto. That's got to be true. Is that not it? Hold on. Kit Fisto. No, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. None of these words are, are in the Bible. But no, uh, yeah, like, uh, all we know is that the humans don't. They're average. Um, yeah. But, yeah, because uh, we're better than them. We? We're yeah, yeah, because we could totally be Jedi's because it's just all about. Uh, how confident Whoa. we are, right? Uh, I don't know, man. Oh, hold on. I don't know. Where's my... Hold on, I'll get man. my hoodie. We'll get just the hoodie. I'll end it with the hoodie. It says, I'm pretty sure bounty hunters can't right, be Jedi. I'm pretty sure. Right, we're getting, we're getting the can... hoodie on. <laughs> I... I... Give me 50 credits. Otherwise, I will put a bounty on, on, on your head. Where's the my purple titty milk? Blue titty milk. Oh, from the alien club? No, that Luke drank in, in The Last Jedi off of the weird island ones. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Last Jedi was a good movie. Holy fuck. I really like that. That's okay. That's the one. That's the one that everybody hates, but I like. The Last Je 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 uh, Jedi. Yes, is it? Yes, it is. It, it is. is. It is your favorite movie now. <laughs> Go get me tacos. <laughs> in, 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 in Robot Chicken, where it's just George w, w. Bush, he's just like, I want tacos. Go get me tacos. He's like, Why are you telling your CIA staff to go get you, 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 you tacos? I don't know, Raza. I don't know, Raza. But why don't you tell our listeners why they should subscribe and tune into our other stuff? Okay, I can't breathe. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us again on our new 2.0. Um, um, of of same ish different day the, the name that we can't say anymore because we're not allowed to say it anymore uh we have a new k-pop video essay out uh, it's what we wanted to do from the start that's a big deal for us so go check it out on our youtube channel we have a bunch of gameplay videos on our second channel we're yeah starting to be fucking channels now um i play a lot of alien isolation so if, if you guys want to get spooked on halloween night or whatever night don't watch any horror movie. Watch it. Watch your boy shit she, she, she himself on on alien isolation. Uh, and then and then and then don't forget to like and subscribe our stuff on YouTube. We have a TikTok. It's it's lit now. Our TikTok's getting litty. I got I got us like three new followers. Three of them. People love K-pop. I didn't realize how much people love K-pop. Uh. Uh, and then, and then, yeah, hit us up on our Instagram, on our YouTube, on our TikToks, and pretty soon we'll have an, an only dance account for just uh, a Star Wars, um, uh, ASMR stuff. themes with uh, Jedi Council members and featuring Panda. We will act out the script of the Jedi Council measuring to see who has the largest wang. The sad part about this is that that's an actual thing. We're not even bullshitting it. Um, uh, but yeah, so thank you guys again. Um, we we appreciate you guys dropping by. Uh, and as per usual, Mondays at, at seven, no six. Mondays at six on Twitch, and then Fridays at nine for our gaming stuff. So just drop by, say hello, what's up, 
give us your your, your money and everything will, will, will be okay but thank you guys again and does bailey have anything to, to say Rise has killed it. Subscribe everything. We live stream here Mondays, Fridays. Bebe does eBay regularly, once a week, but irregularly schedule wise. Uh, if you want to support us, uh, following us on Twitch is very helpful, and following us on TikTok is extra helpful. Share it with your grandmother. Tell your grandmother we're the best. And when next time you're at the grocery store, look for Wine Mom uh, and tell her we miss her. This is. What happens when Wine Mom isn't here? Bullshit like this. We don't know what to do. I'm wearing a mask. He, he, he looks like a wizard, so. Outro time. What, with what? Has four powers, I have fourth powers now. Fuck it. We're introducing it now.